The next chapter of Part 3, The Great Heroes Before the Trojan War, is Chapter 10. Theseus, the dearest of heroes to Athens, engaged the attention of many writers. Ovid, who lived in the Augustan age, tells his life in detail. And so does Apollodorus in the 1st or 2nd century of the Common Era. Plutarch, too, toward the end of the first century of the Common Era, he is a prominent character in three of the Euripides' plays and in one of Sophocles'. There are many allusions to him in prose writers as well as poets. I have followed Apollodorus on the whole, but I have added from Euripides the story of the appeal of Adrastus, the madness of Hercules and the fate of Hippolytus from Sophocles, his kindness to Oedipus from Plutarch, the story of his death to which Apollodorus gives only a sentence. And I guess it's a windy, stormy area. There's like a cave um, looming close. Mountains over, you, you know, you know, the sandy cliffs or whatnot that kind of get are kind of get washed away by the ocean, or maybe they're basalt or something. But um, that's that's the drawing that comes with this. The great Athenian hero was Theseus. He had so many adventures and took part in so many great enterprises that there grew up a saying in Athens nothing without Theseus. He was the son of the Athenian king, Agius. He spent his youth, however, in his mother's home, a city in southern Greece. Agius went back to Athens before the child was born, but first he placed in a hollow a sword and a pair of shoes and covered them with a great stone. He did this with the knowledge of his wife and told her that whenever the boy it was a boy, grew strong enough to roll away the stone and get the things beneath it, she could send him to Athens to claim him as his father. The child was a boy, and he grew up strong far beyond others, so that when his mother finally took him to the stone, he lifted it with no trouble at all. She told him then that the time had come for him to seek his father, and a ship was placed at his disposal by his grandfather, but Theseus refused to go by water, because the voyage was safe and easy. His idea was to become a great hero as quickly as possible, and easy safety was certainly not the way to do that. Hercules, who was the most magnificent of all the heroes of Greece, was always in his mind and the determination to be just as magnificent himself, this was quite natural since the two were cousins. Well, we should always try to do the best we can with whatever we have, right? He steadfastly refused, therefore the ship, his mother, and his grandfather urged on him, telling them that to sail on it would be a contemptible flight from danger, and he set forth to go to Athens by land. The journey was long and very hazardous because of the bandits that beset the road. He killed them all, however. He left not one alive to trouble future travelers. His idea of dealing justice was simple, but effective. What each had done to others, this use did to him. Well, some things should be repeated, but... Skiron, for instance, who had made those he captured kneel to wash his feet and then kick them down into the sea, this use hurled over a precipice. Sinis, who killed people by fastening them to two pine trees, bent down to the ground and, letting the trees go, died in that way himself. Procrustus was placed upon the iron bed, which he used for his victims, tying them to it and then making them 
the right length for it by stretching those 